just give God glory. We just thank God for everyone that's uh, viewing via the way of Facebook and YouTube. We just want to thank you for taking the time out to just hear the word on today. God is so good to us in these times that we're living in right now. You are tuning in to Pastor Tyrone Pitts and the Mission of Love Evangelistic Center. Uh, I am Pastor Tyrone Pitts and this is Tyrone Pitts Ministries and we're just excited about what God is doing at this time. And I'm really just stirred up into, in my spirit on today. Uh, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I believe that there is a right now word for everyone who will listen and who has an ear to hear not what your flesh is saying, but what the spirit of the Lord is saying, because God is always speaking to those who will listen and who have an ear to hear what he is saying. Well, I just want to just give this my kudos out to Apostle Sid Powell on for last week and how we tagged him on our page and how the word of God was just so profound. Uh, I, you know, what we to do as believers, we are to be led by the spirit of God. The Bible says he that is led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And I'm just so grateful for just being led by the spirit of God. And uh, on this week, we're just going to now try to finish up. I'm not going to say that we're going to finish up, but we're going to try to finish up this three part series uh, that we have been dealing with. And the first uh, part was whose report will you believe? And then we went on from there to talk about who told you that. And see, that's the thing. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I want to just sum up some things. Just like when Adam and Eve was in the garden, how many of y'all know that the devil came at Eve and told her everything he wanted to tell her? Now, Eve knew what God had said. Let's not get it twisted. But the reality was that this guy who, who Satan, who was cunning and who was crafty, was able to come and steer her off to the truth that she knew. And the problem I had with that is that when it what comes is when we find out that Adam was right alongside and Adam was doing what Adam was doing and allowing his woman to get manipulated by the enemy without him saying anything. Now, and that's that's the issue. Why is that the issue? Because God told Adam the day that you eat of that tree, you're going to die. But then Satan, he said, well, I, I'm not going to go straight to him. I got to go to somebody that's connected to him. And isn't that how Satan usually do things? He goes to the one that's connected to you to try to get you thrown off the chart. And see, I found out that when he said, but then once all of this took place, don't you know that the eyes when uh, Adam ate of that fruit did nothing happen when Eve ate. But as soon as Adam ate, don't you know, the scripture says, and the eyes of them both. They were they understood that they were naked. Now, this is crazy because then God comes on the scene as he do, as he was doing on an everyday basis, he would come in the cool of the day and he would talk to them. And once all of a sudden he calls out, he says, Adam, where art thou? It's amazing when he said, Adam, where art thou? They were nowhere to be seen. Why? Because the scripture says they hid themselves from the presence of of the Lord. And then then it goes on to be descriptive about what ended up happening. Then they Adam said, well, uh, we were naked. Then God replies to them. He says, who told you that you were naked? And that's what we that's what we're coming up to now. He says, who told you that? Who told you that the coronavirus 
was greater than the authority that you have on the inside of you, because that's what I'm seeing today. We, we know that we're in this uh, situation in the time period and we're in the season where the coronavirus has a lot of play. But I'm here to let you know the coronavirus has been taken care of and has been taken care of by the blood of Jesus Christ himself bore our sickness in his own body on a tree. And then I love how the scripture says, and with his stripes, we are healed. We are past tense. We already are healed. So what are we looking at? What are we hearing? Are we believe or whose report are we believing? And I, I'm telling you, it is just amazing how we can just allow everything that we hear to infiltrate us through our thinking. But don't you know that's how the devil works? Satan comes to steal, kill and destroy. And any way he can get you, it, he'll do that. And he said the devil comes as a roaring lion seeking whom he, he may devour. But I'm here to let you know right now, all those who are viewing this uh, via the YouTube channel, via Facebook, I'm here to let you know that the devil is defeated. He is not going to be defeated. He is already defeated. And the only power that the devil can use is the power that you give unto him. Don't you know, Adam, he submitted his power and authority over to the devil. And that's why Jesus had to come because understand this God's primary purpose was for mankind to be have fellowship with him and so we look at this uh, we look at this now and today we're going to talk about we don't negotiate with terrorists Wow, that's a that's something right there that's a topic that we really can get into and we can uh, do, d delve into and it's amazing how uh, I sp spoke this message over about three years ago and I said mm, I, I couldn't I couldn't really just uh, recall it in my memory I knew it was there in my in my spirit but I just couldn't recall it until a couple of weeks ago the Lord brought that up to me again he says this is the appropriate time for the people of God to hear this. And uh, and, when, and the topic itself is amazing. He says we do not negotiate with terrorists. And I took the time to look up the word terrorist. And the word terrorist means a person who uses unlawful violence and intimidation. Now, don't you know that's what the devil is doing right now? First of all, don't you know that the devil is illegal in this earth realm? He was kicked out of heaven and he was put in this earth. But when he operates in a, the life of a believer, he is operating illegally. And don't you know you have the authority to shut him down? Well, well, what are you talking about, brother? I'm telling you that when I looked at that, he said it's a person. And don't you know, these are uh, army terms that we use. Uh, we find out, you know, I heard a president say uh, that we don't negotiate with terrorists. Well, uh, when when things are going uh, haywire, uh, they're still negotiating. Because if you don't negotiate, that means you don't have any you don't will not allow them to actually operate. You shut it down when you're supposed to shut it down. Well, I'm telling you, the coronavirus is a terrorist spirit. And now I'm seeing I'm recognizing what's actually going on. And we have been negotiating. We have been allowing that spirit to manifest in in this earth realm without the people or the body of Jesus Christ to do anything about it. And let me tell you something. We got to understand that we have authority. God has given every believer in this earth authority to shut down things that are not like God. 
Well, it goes on to say the word negotiate as defined in Webster's Dictionary 1828 edition means to transact business. Now, don't you know that's what the devil has been trying to do? He's been trying to transact business with the people of God, bringing fear. Don't you know that's how the enemy operates? The first thing you know, he he comes, he brings fear he tries to get you all out of whack and all that. But I'm here to let you know, God. Oh, I love the scripture. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Well, if God didn't give us the spirit of fear, then who's behind it? Well, let's go back to the garden. We found out that the devil is behind it. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. That's what the scripture says. And then it goes on to say, it says to transact business, to treat with another, respecting purchase and sale, to hold intercourse. Oh, man, when I heard that. It, as one of the definitions that the it, that we have been ha having intercourse, or we have been in, intermingling with the stuff that's been going on around us. Every time we hear on the news about Corona, don't you know you're putting power behind the Corona virus? Don't you know? See, that's how the devil keeps this stuff in the forefront. He uses he uses social media. He uses the various news outlets. He keeps this stuff going with by keeping all of this in the attention of people. And don't you know, the Bible says, and listen to this. It's, it's amazing. It says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, let me say this. It can be positive or it can be negative, but faith will still come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And see, that's what we, that's what's going on. And let me tell you something. The devil, he knows what he's doing. He's not. He knows that he can play on the minds of those. And let me say that now in go, go to I, I just got this in my spirit. Go to second Corinthians the fourth chapter, and we're going to start reading at the first verse. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and the first verse. It says this, Therefore seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Don't you know we got to we got first of all, we got to understand that we can rightly divide the word of truth. And he says to study. That's why we into. That's why as believers, he took Paul tells us to study, to show ourselves approved. And see, this is where we've been missing it. We try to show ourselves approved to other people, but the word doesn't say that it says study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But I've also got some revelation on that concerning that he says, just like we can rightly divide the word, we can also wrongly divide the word. And and I'm going to tell you, that's where you got to know where who you are as a believer in Jesus Christ, because the thief, he's going to try to come and steal the word that has been sown into your heart. He's going to try to come all kind of ways at you to try to take that word. He will try to pervert the word. That's why Eve was deceived in the garden because Satan had perverted the word. And I'm telling you, he's still doing that. Satan is he's a mimic. He's a copycat. He'll, he'll try to pervert the truth of God's word to fit his position. So because he wants you to change your position. Mm. I'm going to say that one more time. Satan will pervert the word 
to have you change your position to get you out of what God, where God has already put you. Don't you know, as a believer, you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above principalities and above powers and above dominion and above might. Don't you know that you are a king and a priest in the earth realm? Don't you know that you are already whole, sound, complete, nothing missing and nothing broken? Don't you know that you are an heir of God? You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. See, you got to know these things about yourself, because if you don't know it, the devil will tell you who you are and you will go right along with his program. But I'm here to let you know that I am more than a conqueror. Because why? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rise up against me in judgment, I'm going to condemn it for that's my inheritance. And I'm going to tell you this as I'm going to continue reading. It says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, we have this service as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. Did you all hear what that word said? By manifestation. How many of y'all know that there's a revealing of the truth that God has has revealed unto his people that if we got to understand that he has made us kings and priests in this earth realm. Don't you know when a king says something, that means that it has to be done. That's what it means to have authority. And that's what it means that you have to know the authority that God has given you, because if you know the authority that God has given unto you, don't you know that when anything comes that is not like God, you can shut it down just like that. The scripture says casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring it to captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Don't you know that you have been put in a position that that you are on top and not beneath? Don't you know that you are blessed coming and going? But you got to understand that. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And I love verse three. It says it like this. But if our gospel be hid. Hallelujah. He says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God, small g, it ain't talking about our sovereign Lord and Savior King. It says, in whom the God, small g of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. So I'm going to ask this question. Why are so many believers acting the way of the world? That's the question. Because they are blind. They have not gotten the revelation that Jesus is Lord. I'm going to say that one more time. The reason why the believers are acting the way that they are acting, they have not considered what God has already done for them. They have not considered that Jesus. Let me tell you all something. I, I was I was just meditating on this. And don't you know? That in the scripture, go to Hebrews chapter 11 <laughs> and verse number 15. I want y'all to see something. We got to consider what God has already done. And if we don't consider what he's already done, we'll keep on following any and everything that comes. In verse 14, it says, for they, 11 and 14 says, for they that say such things, praise God, declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country, we're talking about Abraham and Sarah now. If they would have been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have have had opportunity to have returned. Don't you know if they would have dis if considered what they was leaving? Don't you know they would, would have been looking back and wanted to go back to where they came from? 
That's what the enemy is doing today. And that's why the minds of the people, just like we were just talking about in, in uh, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, it tells us that the, the reason why, again, he says, but if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world system hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Listen, you got to know without a shadow of a doubt who you are in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you something. The devil wants to keep you back there. He wants to keep you in your past. If he can keep you in your past, you will never see what God has done for you for your future. <laughs> I'm going to say it one more time. The devil's job is to keep you in your past. And I'm going to tell you, he he always brings up the things from your past and, and, and to try to keep you locked in. But the word of God, I love the word of God so much. But the word of God says. We. And, and, and Paul says it like this in the book of Philippians. He said. I haven't arrived. But this one thing I do. People of God, you got to know this. He says, forgetting. Come on, y'all, y'all say it out. Say it with me. Forgetting, <laughs> forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before us. I press toward the mark. For the prize of the high calling of God. In Christ Jesus. See, we've been we, we still as we still as believers, we still at the cross. <laughs> My God, I, 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 I see that now. I see where we still at the cross. When Jesus finished the work. Don't you know we are supposed to be moving now from the cross and living our life of our redemption. Listen to this. Christ hath redeemed us <laughs> from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree so that the blessing of Abraham might come on us through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. The cross represented the curse. Jesus took in his own body the sins of the whole world. Y'all don't believe me? <laughs> I, 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 I know for a fact that if we continue to look back, don't you know we're not fit for the kingdom? <laughs> And I'm, I'm telling you, we, 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 we thinking that we, we, we thinking we going somewhere, but the enemy, he always keeps us back there. But it's time for us to move on. It's time for us to press. And how many of y'all know it takes some effort to press? Press. Ain't, the devil ain't just going to allow you to just press on without bringing obstacles your way. But don't you know that the greater one lives on the inside of you? And because the greater one lives on the inside of you, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Getting back to what we were talking about, man, I, I feel the anointing of God. And, and I, I'm telling you, I, I used to try to, you know, compose myself. I used to try to just stay, stay cool. But I'm telling you, when the power of God is, is resting in you, I'm telling you, there's a, a there's an anointing. That destroys every yoke and removes every burden. Let me tell you something. The word to negotiate, it says to transact business, to treat with another, respecting purchase and sale, to hold intercourse in bargaining or trade, 
either in person or by a broker or substitute as to negotiate with a man for the purchase of goods or a farm. Now, that's that's kind of ironic where that's why the topic of this message is today is we do not negotiate with terrorists because if we will allow ourselves to get in a a negotiating uh, factor with the enemy don't you know satan has been around long enough that he knows how to how the ins and outs of 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 negotiation work but that's why we're supposed to (laughs) I, i love i like to say it like this that's why we're supposed to shut him down what we've done is we've allowed him to keep on going, but it's time for us to shut him down. Hmm. In 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter and the 13th verse, I love this. It says it like this. It says, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore I have spoken. We also believe And therefore, we speak. Well, let me tell you something. What are you saying today? What are you saying about your situation? What are you saying about your life? I'm telling you, there are some good things that the Lord has imparted on the inside of every believer. As a matter of fact, there are some good things that the Lord has imparted on everybody. The Bible says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. God didn't come just to save Christians. God came and saved the whole world. I think that we got to understand and see, as I was thinking about this on today, I I was really just kind of just imagining how, why the Lord loved me so much. It ain't because I'm all that. It's not because I'm all that. It's not because I, I, I have uh, accomplished everything. No, it's not because of that. It's not because of what I could do. Because I'm going to tell you, I love I love to go to this scripture. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. I love to go there because it it shows me that he loved me. God loved me just as much as God loves his son, Jesus. And when you can and when you can really understand that. You was nasty. And he loved you. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, no. And, you know, I, and I know that sounds kind of funny, but if you can really kind of picture that you and your nasty self. Christ died for the ungodly. And now I really have a real revelation of what it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. First John two and two. And and, and I got to go here. I I mean, I'm just a lot. All of this stuff is just coming into my spirit. And so we're just going to we just we just flowing with the spirit. First John two and and two. It says, my little children, these things write out unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, hallelujah, we have an advocate with the father. Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the propitiation. That means he's the payment. Shoot. He he paid for it for our sins. He paid for our sins. And how many of y'all know we couldn't do it? We could not pay for what Jesus for the sins of what we did. We needed a savior. But see, we we and then we we want to we still have this issue about us still being this way. Well, I'm going to tell you something. We have been translated out of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Did you have to do anything? Yep. The only thing you had to do was believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. This is the this is the message of grace. That we have to preach and proclaim in this hour. It says. He says, for we have an advocate 
with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. He's the payment for our sins and not for ours only. See, this is where I was, I was trying to get to. We got to understand it wasn't just for us. It wasn't just for us as believers. It was for the whole world. Jesus Christ died for the whole world. How are we looking at the people? How are we looking at our, our, our loved ones who are not saved? Are we judging them? Well, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus took the penalty in his own body. The judgment has been paid. When he said it was finished, the price was paid. And how was it paid? By the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you something. We, we, we just now, I, I, that's just my foundation of what we're talking about. We do not negotiate with terrorists. And, and then my, my, the last scripture that I'm going to talk about today, and we've been hearing it all along. I've been hearing it uh, through different ministers and, 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 and different people who are, are, are supposed to be word bound and, and, and speaking the word. But Psalms 91, and we're going we're gonna to hit that and we're going to get off of that. And, but Psalms 91 is, is just so profound for this time. We're not negotiating with no terrorists. I'm telling you, the devil, he's been, he been talking long enough. And it's time for him to get where he belongs. Oh, what you mean by that? Well, I'm going to tell you, he has a spot. <laughs> you got to realize that. That devil has a place. In the lives of the believer. Well, well, brother, where, where is his place? His place is under our feet. Psalms 91. Verse one says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Don't you know you got to. It didn't say. He that just comes and just live uh, for one moment and then go back to where he was going. He says, he that dwelleth or remains or stays in the secret place of the <laughs> most high shall abide <laughs> under the shadow of the almighty. Verse two says, I will say, how many of y'all know that that's what the devil been keeping us from doing? He been trying to keep us to shut our mouth. He says, I will say, of the Lord, he, God, is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. It didn't say trust in your own ability, trust in your own thinking. It says trust. Now, don't, don't we know the scripture? Everybody can quote this scripture. And, and so it said, trust in the Lord, Proverbs 3 and 5, with all our heart. We know that by, by heart. He said, but and lean not into our what? Own understanding. It was there in all of our ways. Do what? Acknowledge him. We know that. By, but you know what? We ain't saying nothing. We just keep it quiet. Everybody can say everything they want to say. But no. Nah, mm -mm. He says, trust in the Lord with all our heart. Lean not into our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our path that's what it means when, we, when you when you get out of your own thinking and and you can trust what god has already done through the finished work of jesus christ don't you know that there's some there'll be there'll be more quick transformation to come in your life you won't be thinking the same anymore but you got to change the way you think you hear what i said when and when you can change the way you think then you'll start talking the way god talked been the problem and that's what he talks about in Romans. Be not conformed to this world. Hallelujah. But be ye transformed. I'm about to I'm about to shut it down. I'm about to quit. I ain't finished. I'm about to shut it down. I'm, I'm about to. But he says. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable. And perfect will of God. Don't you know everything that God does? He does it. It's perfect. You know, I'm finding out now that I, now that I'm in him. Don't you know 
I'm just like him. And let me tell you this. In my spirit, that's the real you. You are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. Don't you know your spirit is perfect towards God right now? And I'm telling you that if you can if you can change your mind to that very thing, don't you know everything else will start to fall in line. You got to do something with your soul and you got to do something with your body. You got to change your mind. And once you change your mind and, 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 and you got that two thirds of that of that only one accord, don't you know that your body has to come in line? You don't have no choice but to come in line. No, but we, we've been we've been allowing people and we've been allowing things to dictate to us. But I'm here to let you know. We are kings and we are priests and we have the authority. Well, I'm going to quit. I praise God for this opportunity. I ain't done. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm seeing some things now being revealed and being opened up. And I just thank God for everyone that is listening via the YouTube channel. And I, I'm just so grateful for the, uh, the different responses that we've been getting, the, the good positive feedback that we've been getting because we have determined that we're going to bring the truth. The Bible says speaking the truth in love that we may grow. And right now, before we leave the airways, I just want to just give you Jesus. I'm presenting to those who are, view, who are viewing. We have the capability of reaching millions of people that we would never reach in an average service on a Sunday, especially at the ministry that I'm in. But we have because of technology, God has opened up airways that we can reach people. And I'm telling you, though, there are those who have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. And if you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's real simple. All you got to do is say, Father. Here I am. I thank you because of what you did at the finished work of Jesus Christ. Father, I believe and now I receive what you have done through your son, Jesus. And now I'm a part of the family of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for listening. Again, you can view this on Facebook and you can view this on our YouTube channel. And I just thank God for just an opportunity to come and to just speak a word of truth unto you, because the Bible says you're going to know the truth and the truth is going to make you free. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.